Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. I do have one quick favor before we get to the video that you came here for, and that is very simply this. You see that little red subscribe button below this video? Go ahead, smash that subscribe button. It really does help me. It really does help this channel grow and my audience grow. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And now, here is the video that you came here for. Story. While Florida on the field was clearly the big story, the bigger story to me was the craziness of Gus Malzahn being fired on Sunday at Auburn. And I think for most of you, uh, you were no different than I was. You guys were probably sitting around, guys and girls, were probably sitting around watching the NFL. You know, I was enjoying a little Tua versus Patrick Mahomes. And out of left field, you just see Gus Malzahn fired at Auburn. And it was a shocking decision. It was a shocking move, not because we thought that Auburn fans were necessarily happy with Gus Malzahn, but currently in the climate that we were in, it was a little bit shocking. So first of all, just a little bit of background on it. Uh, on the not shocking side, I guess you could just say very simply, well, it's Auburn. <laughs> and for those of you who are not college football historians, Auburn has historically, I don't know that I agree in this case, this is the example to use, but historically they have had a little bit of a short leash with coaches. Uh, Gene Chizik, who won a national championship in 2010, was fired two years later. First coach to ever be fired two years after winning a national championship. And overall, this is kind of an incredible stat. There are three different coaches in my lifetime, I'm in my 30s, that coached at Auburn that have been fired that have had an undefeated season. Gene Chizik had one when he had Cam Newton. Uh, Tommy Tuberville had one. And before that, before I even really was watching college football, Terry Bowden had an undefeated season, was eventually fired at Auburn. So Auburn, not afraid to pull the trigger. And because of that, uh, it, it wasn't really that surprising. I do think, though, given the context of where we are today, December 14th, 2020, I do think it was pretty shocking. Very simply put, first of all, this guy, I, listen, I think we can all agree that Auburn uh, wasn't at the top of the SEC, not competing with the Alabamas and Georgias, their biggest rivals, but Gus Malzahn had gone 68-35 and 35 overall, uh, had won two division titles, had played for a national championship in 2013, ironically a game that I attended against Florida State, um, but beyond that, um, you know, he, he, he beat Alabama a few times. He gave Nick Saban fits as much as anyone has given Nick Saban fits. And I think in the broader picture, it's, again, the climate that we're in in December of 20, uh, 2020. Uh, yeah, December 2020. We are in the middle of a pandemic. We all kind of understood that, yeah, if you were really bad, you might get fired. But I thought that, I think we all thought that unless something catastrophic happened, uh, most of these coaches would survive for at least another year. And so when you look at Auburn's record this year, they did finish 6-4 and four overall. I will say that they did lose to the three best teams on their schedule. They lost to their rival Alabama. They got smoked. They lost to their rival Georgia. They got smoked. And they lost to Texas A&M in a game that, that they had a lead late, but, but really Texas A&M was the better team. And so... I get both sides, right? I, I understand the person that was sitting there saying, uh, uh, this, this is not shocking, it's Auburn, they lost to the three best teams, but I would also say they went 6-4 and four in the middle of a pandemic uh, in a year where they largely took care of the teams that they were, going to they were supposed to take care of. And so I think a lot of us kind of realized, hey, in the big picture, Gus Malzahn's probably not the guy to topple Nick Saban. I don't think after eight years he's going to somehow figure out, figure something out that's different to have success against Nick Saban and Kirby Smart. But I think given everything, it was surprising that it happened this offseason, especially given this. Uh, Gus Malzahn is owed $21 million to, uh, to finish out his contract at Auburn. He has a $21 million buyout, which means that Auburn has to pay him $21 million to not coach their football team this year. And to me, I know we've all kind of become numb to buyouts in college football, but that's the part that's preposterous to me. I just figured, look, Gus ain't the answer long term, but in the short term, let's run it back for next year. Let's get that buyout number down. Let's get a vaccine out there. Let's get fans in the stands, and let's make that $21 million something closer to 10 or 12 and hope that you could get rid of them and that the finances are in order, the books are in order, and that it's a lot easier. So the fact that he was fired with $21 million off a good but not great season, that is the shocking part to me. Uh, I would also say, by the way, we can probably bury this notion that we're not going to fire coaches in the middle of a pandemic when Gus Mal 
Malzahn's owed $21 million. Not sure if you guys saw this over the weekend, but Kevin Sumlin fired at Arizona. He'll be owed close to $8 million. Will Muschamp was owed $13 million. Uh, Lovey Smith was also fired on Sunday as well. Not quite sure in his bio. But I think that narrative of we're not going to fire coaches during a pandemic, yeah, we could throw that one out. Should also probably mention that Tom Herman, uh, had Texas been able to get the candidate that they wanted, Tom Herman was probably also sayonara, see you later at Texas. So with all that said, Gus Malzahn is gone. I think it's both shocking and not shocking. But to me, when I look at this in the bigger picture, I think one simple thing. I think that Auburn definitively has their next head coach, and I think we all know who that coach is. A man that recently appeared on the Aaron Torres Sports Podcast. A man by the name of Hugh Freeze. (laughs) And before I get into Hugh Freeze, uh, I kind of want to contextualize this a little bit because obviously whenever any coach gets fired, you kind of see a lot of, uh, you know, names pop up and all that stuff. And there are a lot of good names associated with this Auburn job, as there should be. It is a good school. They will pay you well. I mean, they're paying the former guy $20 million to go away. So you know you're going to be paid well at Auburn. Um, And, you know, the names are probably names that you're probably not surprised by. Billy Napier, who was a candidate at the South Carolina job, uh, he is the head coach at Louisiana. They are currently 9-1, and coming off an 11-win season. He is a candidate. Uh, also, Mario Cristobal is a candidate. Mario Cristobal is the head coach at Oregon. They just won the Pac-12 last year, just went to the Rose Bowl. He has ties coaching in the Southeast, played at Miami, coached as an assistant at Alabama. And so a lot of people are sitting there saying, well, maybe Mario Cristobal would be the fit. First of all, let me say this. Mario Cristobal, it is a not-so-hidden secret in the world of college athletics that Mario Cristobal is the 11th highest-paid coach in, in the Pac-12. So out of 12 teams in the Pac-12, Mario Cristobal is the 11th highest-paid coach. And so to me, when I see his name pop up in this search, I don't believe that he's actually realistically a candidate um, for the simple fact that I think he just wants to raise at Oregon. I think he wants to be paid the way that he believes that he should be paid in a conference that he just won this year. So don't be surprised to see him use his name to leverage a better contract at Oregon. And by the way, they better move quickly because signing day is coming up here in the next few days. Uh, I don't know what Auburn is going to do, but Oregon has a top 10 recruiting class and Mario Cristobal has to get that new contract. If that's what he's aiming for, he better get that thing signed, sealed and delivered or that class might fall apart really quick. Uh, So I don't think Mario Cristobal is a guy. Billy Napier obviously could be. But I want to ask one very simple question. When you fire a coach and you want to pay, and you're willing to pay him, I should say, $21 million to go away, do you think Billy Napier is really the name you're going after? Do you think that Mario Cristobal, with due respect to him, is the name you're going after? Or are you going after a name? Are you firing a coach and paying him $21 million if you want the supreme candidate that you know you can get and that you know will rally the fan base? And if that's the case... I don't see how it's anybody other than Hugh Freeze. And so to me, we'll get into Hugh Freeze in a second, but it becomes the very simple situation of, let's just think about this logically, people. If, if, if it's not Hugh Freeze, if we're just going into a coaching search blind and we don't know who it could be or where it could be or who would take the job, who wouldn't, would you really fire Gus Malzahn and would you really pay him $21 million? And on top of that, if you are going to fire him and you are going to pay him $21 million, are you going to bring in anybody other than a guy that it's going to be a home run hire and rally the fan base? Is it, could it possibly be anybody other than Hugh Freeze? And I think the very simple answer is no. Now, in terms of why Hugh Freeze is a home run hire, well, you know, he's been a hot topic on this podcast here over the last two or three weeks. I talked about his candidacy at SEC schools. At the time, we talked South Carolina, maybe Tennessee, uh, but, but it doesn't change, right? He has some good and some bad, but it is out in the open. The bad is, of course, that there were major NCAA rules violations under his watch at Ole Miss. I will say, in Hugh Freeze's defense, the NCAA did not find him guilty personally of any, any rules violations. And, of course, he had the off-the-field situation with the escort service, whatever, blah, 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 which he actually talked about on this show. And he said he's not proud of it. And he said he made amends with his wife. And he said that he went to his wife uh, long before the story came out. I don't know if that's 100% true. I can't speak to it. But I will defend Hugh Freeze by saying he's been very open about it, not just on this podcast, but basically every other interview he's done. So that is the bad with Hugh Freeze that I think every fan base is kind of wrapping their head around of does it make sense, does it not make sense. But you know what the good is? 
he's a really good football coach. Like, he's a really good football coach. And that is where I think this would rally the Auburn fan base, is that he is a guy that, first of all, back-to-back Sugar Bowls at Ole Miss at a time when the SEC West was really rolling, right? Nick Saban at Bama. By the way, Hugh Freeze beat Nick Saban twice. Gus Malzahn at Auburn. Kevin Sumlin at Texas A&M. Like, there were some really good teams with some really good players in that league, and Hugh Freeze was running up through and around him at Ole Miss. And on top of that, he's now done it again at Liberty, which is currently at 9-1 and uh, with, uh, you know, with their season basically over pending a bowl game. But the bottom line remains, the guy is a great football coach. And so to me, it just feels so obvious that this has to be the guy for Auburn because why else are you going to fire Gus Malzahn and be willing to pay him $21 million to go away, be willing to have the boosters cut a check in this current political environment, political, not the right word, but this current economic climate. Are your boosters writing a check just to go out onto the market and hope you get somebody or do they already know who they have in Hugh Freeze? I would also say one thing that's really important here, which I put out on Twitter, which got one fan base really upset. I think this is the time to make the move if you're Auburn, and here's why. First of all, Gus ain't the guy, right? Talked about it, eight years, two SEC West titles, a couple wins over Saban, which is incredible, relatively speaking, but he's not the guy to eventually take down Saban. The bigger thing, though, is that this is a year where South Carolina has already fired and hired their new head coach, and it doesn't appear as though anyone else will have a coaching search this season. And so because of this, I believe that Auburn wanted to get ahead of the posse and take care of this and get it done for the very simple reason that if they don't and they wait until next year, they could be competing with the University of Tennessee for Hugh Freeze. And I think if you're competing with Tennessee, that's not a place that Auburn wants to be in because I think Auburn's a really good job. But SEC West, Nick Saban, uh, Jimbo Fisher, Lane Kiffin kind of has things scary at Ole Miss right now. Or you could go to Tennessee where, you know, Florida's good, but they don't play defense. Georgia's good, but they don't play offense. Like, like, like if, if we're talking a year from now, it feels as though – if Hugh Freeze, if he has a choice between Auburn and Tennessee, he might take Tennessee. I would also add, kind of spent most of his early portion of his career at Tennessee, obviously in Tennessee, I should say. We all know about the blind side. We all, for those of you who haven't heard the story, there's this famous story of on his honeymoon, he's driving through the South with his, with his wife, stops at Neyland Stadium and says, I want to coach here someday. I want to coach in the SEC someday. So to me, what this is really about from Auburn, you don't fire you, you don't fire Gus Malzahn if you don't know who the next guy is, and you do it now so you don't have to compete with Tennessee potentially next year for Hugh Freeze. Now, of course, there's always the situation where Jeremy Pruitt totally figures it out in year four, uh, and I don't think he's been quite as bad as people say. He hasn't been good, certainly. But you look at the Hugh Freeze situation and I, or the Jeremy Pruitt situation, if they have a normal out-of-conference slate, are they potentially 6-6 six and six and going to a bowl game? I don't know if you replace two SEC teams, including Texas A&M this weekend, uh, with, with, with bad teams. Do you potentially go to a bowl game? I don't know. I'm not saying Jeremy Pruitt's the answer either. But to me, I look at this situation with Hugh Freeze, and I say very simply, I think Auburn is getting ahead of the posse and saying, look, if we, if we had to wait until next offseason, we could get into a bidding war with Tennessee, and it's a war that we might lose, not because of money, but because of the circumstance where maybe that he just wants that job more. So it's savvy by Auburn if it ends up happening. And I'll tell you this, too. There was one other tea leaf that kind of came out late Sunday that makes me believe that Hugh Freeze is going to be the guy. Not sure if you saw this, but Brett McMurphy put out on his Twitter feed, the respected voice of college football, college football insider, that if Hugh Freeze does in fact leave Liberty, that they may go out and get Art freaking Bryles, baby, <laughs> all right? Art freaking Bryles. And listen, what the, the should Art Bryles be a head coach probably is the conversation for another day. All I know is that a few schools have vetted him and maybe his actual responsibility for what happened at Baylor wasn't what it was reported to be. But what I would tell you is if Liberty is already making it publicly known that they have a list behind Hugh Freeze, I think it means that they believe that he is ready to leave and take that Auburn job. I would say I could see all this happening very quickly 
because of the fact that, again, National Signing Day is Wednesday. They need to get the new coach in place. They need to get the new circumstances in place to let that coach succeed and go out and hopefully sign a top, uh, top recruiting class. But the fact remains is that this is fascinating. Gus is out. I believe Hugh Freeze is in, but it remains to be.